we've heard a lot about crime being down. Uh, it's uh, historically uh, trending down. Does it feel that way when you talk to the people in your 21st Ward? No, it, it doesn't feel that way. And the, the kind of crime that folks care about that really affects the quality of life is violent crime. Uh, and so I think that it is intellectually dishonest to try to play number games and say that total crime is down when homicide and shootings are up in double digits. So we've seen in the first quarter of this year in the city of St. Louis, homicides up by more than 20 percent. So it doesn't matter how much, um, you know, car break-ins are down or petty crimes. That's the kind of crime that really affects people's quality of life and perception of the city. Same in your neighborhood, how are things going in terms of the perception when you talk to people in the Central West End? Uh, the perception in the Central West End, I believe, is that over the years, uh, the Central West End has gotten better, uh, safer. Um, and that's a result of a few programs that have helped us uh, achieve that. Um, we have, um, we're fortunate to have um, a, a tax base that, that funds supplemental police patrols, um, several thousand of those a year. Uh, off-duty police officers riding bikes, which we think has a, a huge impact uh, both on the perception and the reality of crime and, and keeping it from happening in the Central West End. Um, recently, uh, we, we've started to add cameras as part of our uh, approach to push down crime. We've, we have them installed on a small scale and they've worked in many instances to help provide the police um, good intelligence to help solve crimes and, and that is really uh, the importance of, of crime reduction is identifying who's committing the crime and holding them accountable and, 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 and the third leg to that is uh, court advocacy, uh, getting involved as a neighborhood uh, in the court process. Um, I, I believe the police are arresting the right people and those people are, are, are being properly charged by the circuit attorney's office. And then it's, it's our job as a neighborhood, uh, as residents, uh, to attend hearings when we can and uh, let the judges know how that crime affects them as residents and uh, be there uh, as a witness for the neighborhood uh, to see that things get uh, played out uh, in, a, in an acceptable manner. I want to talk more about that, uh, the, the community's responsibility, but first I just want to ask you, Rachel, those are very, kind of two different views in the same city. I know you work in community, right. uh, in, in, in the community. What are you seeing trend-wise? What are you seeing city-wide-wise? You know, I think sadly, a lot of the crime in the city is really a perception problem. Although I would agree with Alderman French, I mean, candidly, one murder is too many. And so when you have a community that, that really focuses on the fear and focuses on the number of homicides, that really lessens their response. And one of the things that I'm seeing across the city is the community like in the Central West End and in O'Fallon and in Walnut Park. Tonight I was at a meeting in The Ville, one of the toughest neighborhoods in the city, where residents are saying, you know what, I'm tired of seeing these numbers. I'm tired of seeing young men shot and dead and I'm gonna do something about it. And I actually see those steps as really exciting. So I, the numbers trouble me that I hear with the homicides, and it frightens me, but you know what? We need to take those numbers, and we need to take that information, and let the people who I see every day hear it and act on it, because that's gonna be the step we need to change crime in the city. Can, can, it, can that really work? Well, listen, I think what we have here is, um, you know, in a city like St. Louis, where, uh, your quality of life really depends on the neighborhood you live in. You have a completely different St. Louis experience depending on the side of town or the neighborhood you live in. And so probably about one third of our population, about 100,000 people live in neighborhoods where there were zero homicides last year. And another third of our population lives in areas where there were over 100 homicides. And so the perception is completely different. And then you've got, uh, for one side, the main problem related to crime is the city's perception of crime. Uh, the, the city's image, that is their chief concern, in, in improving the image of the city. But for another section, the chief concern is actual violent crime. And so what we try to do in, is try to make our problem the whole city's problem to a certain extent is that people need to understand that we're all in this together. And if there are any neighborhoods in the city where people feel unsafe to let their children play out front, where they worry about hearing gunshots every single night, then even if you live in a safe neighborhood that is in the city of St. Louis, their problem is our problem. 
because at the end of the year, on the pace we are right now, there's going to be over 100 murders in the city, uh, and that affects us all. Can something uh, from Lafayette Square work in uh, Fairground Park area? Sure. The neighborhood ownership model is something that we've, um, we've embraced in the Penrose and O'Fallon neighborhood with much success. Um, but even the characteristics of a Penrose and O'Fallon neighborhood are different from the characteristics of, say, a College Hill neighborhood, which is right next door. Um, the, the actual quality of life and, and demographics are different in those neighborhoods. What we have to do, I think, is recognize that it's not just isolated hot spots. And in fact, we've got entire areas of the city that are always hot, and they require more resources. And so that's the conversation that the chief and I have been having publicly and privately, uh, is allocating more resources to those areas and really taking violent crime more seriously than other crime. I think a lot of uh, what we hear from the chief is equating all crime. He probably says that crime in general is down, but all crime is not equal. And what I'm focused on is violent crime, homicides, and shootings. So uh, you're talking about these people who feel passionate, that, that want to do something about it. They're tired of this. Can that actually, can, do they have the power to really do something? What, what concrete thing can they really do? There are so many things that they can do. They can first come forward when they know something. And the majority of the crimes that happen in the city, the people walk are not held accountable because we do not have the necessary witnesses and victims come forward. No snitching. It's, and I wouldn't even say it's no snitching. I think people will call the police anonymously. But when it's time to actually come in and look at a lineup, or when it's time to come into court, they don't come in. And they don't realize that the power in the word of one person can change an entire case. There was recently a case with a, where a, a nine-year-old, her family trusted the system, she was the eyewitness, she came forward on a murder case, that murderer went to prison for life. And that was on the word of a nine-year-old. And if there's one thing that people in this city, in this area, need to know, is that the word of one person can really turn a crime and turn the community around. Uh, Antonio was talking about resources. That Barnes Jewish has a stake in the Central West End. I know they've played a role in some of the cameras you're talking about. Is that could you could you do what you're doing without a partner like that, for instance? Well, they've been a very uh, Washu Medical Center, the whole complex. They've been a, a, a big partner in what we're trying to do, but. Um, the other fundings also come from the taxpayer, the tax base, and uh, the Central West, parts of the Central West End are divided up into special taxing districts, and those districts have stepped up to also uh, have a stake in this, this larger camera project that's going to be going on. So do we all have a stake in, like Antonio was saying, all areas, or are we just going to fix one neighborhood at a time? Is it possible to do it any other way? Well, I would argue that we need to focus on the areas. If, we, if our intention is really to drop the numbers of violent crimes, especially homicides, we should focus resources on those areas where we know those violent crimes mostly occur. And so, you know, I would, I would ask a Barnes or a, a Washington University to take seriously what is occurring in some of our roughest neighborhoods in the city. They may not be near their campuses, but when the New York Times has a front page story about the homicide rate in the city, uh, that affects recruitment. That affects uh, the ability of funders uh, to, to, uh, to get workers uh, for new startups in the so city. So we should join the city and county and those would go away? See, no, absolutely not. Because what the problem is with that is that um, what I'm focused on in making these blocks safer. Uh, there are other folks who are primarily focused on the perception. But, um, you know, merging city and county crime statistics won't make our neighborhoods safer any more than merging city and county uh, test scores for schools will make our kids smarter. I'll